All right, digging into the charging system today, I want to show you guys how to remove the flywheel, how to remove and replace the stator, what gaskets you'll need, what tools you'll need, and that, and that entire process. So I asked you guys previously where you'd like me to head next. This is something that you guys mentioned, and so I'm going to head that direction. I want to show you guys everything you need to know underneath the left-hand cover here. So we've got a recoil pull starter, we've got our footwell, uh, we've got our uh, left-hand crankcase cover here. I'm going to show you how to remove all of those as well as replace those parts inside there. So thank you guys for your comments. I appreciate you guys watching. Give us a thumbs up if this video has been helpful. To start here, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to have the camera be out a little ways. To start, I want to show you what parts, what body parts here we need to remove before uh, we start getting into your charging system. And then as soon as I get the body panels off here, I'll get you a closer view. That way you can see exactly what I'm doing. So. this footwell here. You've got four 10 millimeter bolts down below and I can get you a zoomed in picture here in a second, but I think those are pretty self-explanatory. Four bolts, two in front of your foot peg here, two in the back. So once you get those removed, then you've got Allen bolts, uh, six of those around these around this fender panel here, or this footwell, and you've got nuts in the back of there. Those can sometimes be a big challenge uh, because of dirt and debris getting shoved in there. Sometimes uh, those just get corroded on the back side. Sometimes your wrench doesn't hold well. So be careful removing those. You don't want to typically heat those up. Uh, I've seen some guys get an angle grinder out and try grinding the head off. The problem with doing that is you actually heat this plastic up. You know, feel like you're coming off really well. The problem is you're ripping that all the way through your footwell here and worse off, you're, you're gonna pull that right through your fender there. So try not to use an angle grinder. Uh, unless that's like last case scenario. If you end up having to do that, you can take, heat that bolt up a little bit, pull it straight through there, okay, and then you can get a little bit bigger washer and put it over top. Now if you take and pull it down and pull it to the side, that's you can, you're gonna completely destroy your footwell there. Then you're gonna have some more serious problems, it's gonna look like a piece of junk. So remove those allens if you can uh, with a wrench on the back, then this entire footwell will come off there. We did that already because sometimes these down here can be a bit of a challenge. They get dirt and debris stuck in there. Um, so what I do a lot of times, I'll take actually an impact socket, I'll set it on my bolt there, and then I'll take a hammer and tap that down just to make sure that that socket's uh, seated properly before we go any farther. So I'm gonna leave this full well on here until I zoom in, you guys can see this, and then we're gonna get it a little bit farther into our charging system here. All right, that's what the foot well looks like. You can see we've got one, two, three, and Four. It's kind of hard to line my finger up with the camera there, but four of those 10 millimeter bolts We've got three of the Allen's that are in the front there and then three in the back there So charging system we're gonna be dealing with the recoil there as well as the engine crankcase cover on this side so Pulling this footwell off. That's easy to do at this point. We've got all those bolts out of there. You just uh, Lift that straight off of there now for your recoil pull starter. That's here Okay, and then we have our engine crankcase. You also have your dipstick here. Obviously, we're gonna drain the oil. Now, question is, do you guys believe there's supposed to be oil inside of your stator, your charging system? Leave a comment below if you do or don't believe. So, that is one of my most common questions to ask is, is there supposed to be oil in our charging system? I'll show you here in a little bit if you are or not supposed to. Listen, there's a dipstick right there. What do you think the answer is? All right, pulling our last recoil pull starter bolt out. Now, you guys are gonna be able to see from the video there, we had two of them snap off. I don't know, and maybe you guys can help me out here. I don't remember Yamaha ever using an Allen for our recoil bolts here. So these very well could have been replaced. They look like the right thread pitch. These two came out uh, fairly easily, a whole lot easier, obviously, than these. So we've got some work that we got to do here. We'll probably drill those out, retap those threads. Uh, not a big deal since it's going into aluminum case. Not hard to do. It's just kind of annoying. We weren't going to have to do that before. This is the recoil pull starter. I've already mentioned that uh, once, but you don't want water and debris into this in this housing here. Nor do you see any oil in this housing. There is no gasket on here. Sometimes you'll see a paper gasket. Uh, you can if you've got issues with water getting in here and then your pool, your recoil pull starter are not working well. You can actually put some liquid gasket on there. It's not gonna hurt anything by doing this, but Yamaha doesn't come out with it 
from the factory having a gasket on here. So I feel like why add it if Yamaha has not, is not that concerned about it. Next thing you'll do, grab a 17 millimeter socket there. So far, no oil in here. You guys see any oil? What do you guys think? Is there gonna be oil underneath of this cover here? We'll see. 17 millimeter impact driver here, impact socket. Uh, again, I like the DeWalt brand. Let me know what you guys like, what's working best for you guys. Take, turn that off, regular threads. Okay, pull that bolt out of there. It's about an inch and a half, two inches long. Okay, it's got a washer on there to make sure that washer stays on. And then you can pull this off. This right here is called the recoil pull starter cup or gear or catch. I think some people call them a catch. Okay, we've got a seal right here. Potentially, that could be a leaky part, okay? This recoil pull starter, if it gets water debris in there, this seal goes bad, gets dinged up, whatever, whatever, okay, this seal could start leaking. If that were the case, you would have engine oil dropping out of here. There is a very, very small groove right here to where if you're getting engine oil in here or you have gotten water in here, that you should be dripping out of that little groove there right on the bottom. You probably really can't see it in this video because it is very, very small, but that is gonna be open. So if you were to take your four-wheeler, bury it in the water, okay, this isn't completely sealed. Water would fill up into that area there. Okay, moving on, we've got our inspection window. When we adjust the valves, and I, that could be an idea. I could show you how to adjust the valves on this Grizzly. Okay, I've got an inspection cap here. I'll pull that cap just so you can see what it looks like. Larger flat screwdriver. I like to even use something larger than this, but this is a plastic cap so it strips out, rounds off pretty easily. You wanna make sure tightening back up that you don't go too tight or you're gonna have some serious issues there. Now, if you're trying to find top dead center, a lot of times what I'll do, and this will be kind of a preview for our, our valve adjustment video, but a lot of times I'll pull that cover off there before I pull your recoil pull starter and then you're able just to take and spin your motor over by hand this way, okay? If you have this recoil pull starter cup off of here, and you try turning this over, you're not gonna do a very good job of it. Now, for lining up your top dead center mark, you turn this over. Now, I'm just gonna warn you right now, I don't wanna get, this isn't gonna be a valve adjustment video, but I wanna warn you, if you take and turn this over just like this, this does catch sometimes, or because of the compression inside your motor there, it'll actually take and jerk your hand. Now, I'm wearing these flimsy gloves. People are probably gonna be making fun of me because of these gloves, but they do tend to rip very easily. They tend to catch on here very easily. So you just wanna be careful with or without rubber gloves uh, that when you're turning this that you've got a firm grip on there so it doesn't fling out of your hands and tear your hands up. These are pretty sharp. So find top dead center. Again, I'll do a separate video on that, but um, that is how you do it there. And there's lines in there. I'll get into more detail about that later. Pull your recoil pull starter off and your cup there that we just removed. And now we're gonna remove all these eight millimeter bolts around the outside. All right, 12 eight millimeter bolts around the outside. We're gonna remove those at this time. Now this cover is ready to come off of here. So what are you guys' thoughts? Oil in there or not oil in there? The moment of truth, we need a hammer. Okay, take a hammer and tap on it. Now what I do is if you grab a rubber hammer or a plastic hammer, a mallet like we have, what I do is kind of hit it and I'll kind of pull it back all at the same time, okay? And you do that and that's gonna kind of force that to pull off of there, okay? So we've got it loosened up, we've got it ready to come off of there. Now the next thing you're gonna do, there's wires hooked up because this is a charging system so there's electronics hooked up to it. Take your impact, or your eight millimeter socket there, remove this wire holder. Now this is your ground wire as well. So make sure that that goes back in place when you're going back together. Now you can take your clamp, loosen it up like that. We can take this and now we can find uh, where your stator wires go. There looks like a zip tie right here that we need to remove. Now be careful, really careful when you go to cut these zip ties. I've done thousands of these before, so I kind of know what I'm feeling for, but it's so easy to take and clip a wire just like that. I wanna warn you, that's not a good idea. It just kind of creates more work for you. Now, there should be two connectors that you'll wanna remove here, a white one and what they would call probably a clear one. It's not very clear anymore. The white one here, you're actually just gonna push down on the tab and you'll be able to see that small tab 
go down and then pull that out. Now this clear one or this off white one, you actually take and the tab, it's the only tab on this one, you take and pull that out and pull that down. Now you wanna make sure that you're not grabbing clear back here and pulling these wires. You wanna pull, there's, there's some grooves right here to where you can get your finger, get a little pressure and you're able to take and pull that down. When you're pulling that out and pulling it down, uh, continue lifting up with your, your finger here on this tab and that'll allow you to get past that little groove there. So now we got those both off. This needs to have an O-ring around it. So make sure that that plug is sealed up. This goes to your stator wires. Should be three yellow wires, yep. And you can test those. I'll show you how to do that at some point. So now we are completely detached from the four-wheeler. We can pull this off. Is there gonna be oil underneath of here? The correct answer is yes. There is gonna be oil in this charging system. All right, that is not true for all of them. There's oil in this one. That is not true for some of the Polarises, for sure. There's other brands, I'm not gonna name them all here, but there's other brands that there should not be oil in your uh, charging system area, okay? So that seal that I showed you, and I wanna show you this uh, starter gear as well, here in a second, but. Okay, that seal that I showed you over here. Now, because there is oil in this housing here, this seal is a fairly common problem to go bad. So if you are seeing oil dripping out of this bottom orifice here, this bottom notch, you wanna make sure that you take your recoil pull starter off and inspect this seal. That is more than likely where your issue is. Probably not gonna be that plastic cap. That's probably not gonna seal. Uh, that's probably not gonna ever leak. It's probably more than likely gonna be this seal here. Common problem. Let me know if you need this seal. I can get you guys that seal uh, as well. So pulling this off then, uh, you've got a gasket all the way around the outside of this cover here. Make sure you get that replaced every time. You see this gasket here, it looks really good. You think, oh shoot, we may as well reuse it. Right here, there's a little bit of a break. I mean, it just takes one small area that's cracked or broken and you're gonna have some serious problems. So I like to replace that gasket every single time I pull this cover off. That being said, if I own a Grizzly 350, I'll probably have a handful of these gaskets in stock or at least one or two. That way, if we're ever out uh, and I need to uh, change a stator, if I need to replace my starter drive or anything, I've got a gasket here handy. They're not very expensive. Let me know if you guys need those. So this is the stator. This is what I was saying. Uh, has got the, the three yellow wires. That primarily takes care of your stator. We've got our pulser here, and that has to do with our flywheel, which I'll get to here in a little bit. But your flywheel is here. Now, it takes a special tool to remove this flywheel. Before I get into that, I want to show you the starter drive. Right here is your starter motor. This is your electric starter motor. So you hit your switch at your handlebars, goes through your relay, goes through your wires, goes to your starter here. Now, Bunch of different things, a bunch of different problems you can have with your starter. If your four-wheeler's not starting, a lot of people will send me a message saying, why isn't my four-wheeler starting, okay? I hear a knock, or I hear a click, or I hear a tick, or I don't hear anything, okay? Could be about 25 different things. One of the 25 different things could be your starter motor could be stuck. Could be your starter drive is stuck. Your starter gear right here, this is, um, this is a, a two gear setup here, meaning uh, we've got a shaft here you can pull out. A lot of times that'll come out when you pull that cover out. And you've got gears on this side and you've got smaller gears on this side. These smaller gears here are gonna touch directly to your starter. So if we were to take and hit our starter button right now, our starter would turn over. Our motor would not because it takes this idler gear here to kind of put the two and two together, okay? So if we put this in, um, and hit our starter button, our motor's gonna turn over. Okay, so sometimes what happens is these teeth get worn off on this uh, gear here, so your starter's turning over just fine, but your starter gear is not, okay? Or the other side, a couple of these teeth could break off, so your starter gear might be turning over with these smaller teeth here, but it's not gonna turn your motor over, okay? Also, when we get this flywheel pulled off, I'll show you a couple of other things that it could be if your four-wheeler is not starting because of uh, your starter system. Next thing that you'll need to know if you're replacing your flywheel or having to pull your flywheel off or having to deal with your one-way gear that's in behind this flywheel, you're gonna need a special puller that looks like this. I sell these, I'll put a link below. I sell a lot of these. Listen, I wanna let you guys know if you need this tool, click on the link below. If you just go and search for a flywheel puller, 
there is literally thousands of flywheel pullers, all different makes, models, different sizes, thread pitches, uh, different shaft lengths, different uh, bolt lengths here. Not all of them will work. It's not a one size fit all type of tool. This is special for this four wheeler. This may fit a couple other four wheelers. I will be able to tell you that if you're wondering if you have four different four wheelers, I can tell you if you need four different polars. So order this in the link below. That way you make sure and get the right one. A lot of times what I see people do is they'll order one that looks like the one that they need, but these thread pitches will be slightly different. Now, if I take and screw this puller on just like this, and it's not the exact size that I need, I'm gonna start cross threading those uh, threads. Now that's not the worst part. When I go to impact this on and push this down, you're gonna be putting a serious amount of force on those threads. You're gonna pull those threads completely out of your flywheel. Now what are you gonna do? Your flywheel is stuck on there. You have nothing to pull against there. I would ask you guys at this point, if somebody did not have threads on their flywheel, how would you guys suggest removing that flywheel? I'd like to see those in the comments below. What you guys' thoughts are on pulling a flywheel that the threads have been completely screwed up. I'm honestly curious what you do at that point. Now, the next thing that I like to do that a lot of people won't mention is put your bolt back in there that you pulled out of your recoil pull starter cup. This cup right here. You don't need the washer on there. That'll make it fairly difficult to fit. Put that back on there because what I like to do is thread that all the way in. Okay, now you take the correct puller and slide it on there. The reason why I do this is because this bolt right here is actually gonna go all the way in. It's gonna be touching your crankshaft. Now, if you run this in, your flywheel is just really stuck onto your crankshaft. You're gonna be pushing this puller in, 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 and it's gonna end up damaging your crankshaft. That's why I put that other bolt in there to keep from damaging that crankshaft. That's nothing you wanna mess with. Okay, on my pullers, grab your socket here. Grab your, this is a 19 millimeter and thread that in. And just like that, it'll pull right off of there. Now, a lot of times, especially if your four wheeler's been any kind of water or abused, or this puller's, or this flywheel's been off before, a lot of times it won't come near that easy. Okay, I, somebody's been in this housing before for sure. So that comes off of there. I don't think you'll be able to pull this off. Yeah, I guess you can pull that off of there with your bolt still being on there, but it's good just to get that out of the way. Okay, that bolt is out. Okay, now we have our flywheel. We also have our one-way gear, okay, or a one-way bearing. We've got a woodruff key in here. I'd like to remove that at this point. If you're just going back together again right away, keep this handy. These are very, very small, but they are crucial. You wanna make sure you don't forget that. What I was gonna say is you could actually put that back down in that slot there as long as you're going back together right away. If this motor for some reason gets turned over or something, I don't want that to fall out. You have to have that woodruff key in there. So our one-way gear here will slide on there. There's a, there's a small washer on the back of your one-way gear here or your larger starter gear. You can slide that back on there if that's what you need to do, but that should go one direction, okay? So it should go this way. So this is, obviously it's gonna be sitting on the four wheeler this way. So looking at it this way, it's gonna go counterclockwise. Okay, it's not gonna go the other way. You see, I'm trying to turn it, it doesn't turn the other way. If yours does, you've got something wrong. Now, if these get replaced, you've got three Allen bolts there and your one-way bearing would come off of there. This is actually like a two or three piece setup here. You've got uh, your outer uh, housing here and then you've got your inner bearings and these bearings, these little posts here can actually um, fall out of there. So make sure that that goes on there properly. Make sure everything looks good. Make sure it spins the right direction before going back together. What I do when I'm going back together, real quick, I'm gonna show you this why I have the flywheel off. We get your oil pump down here. You got your crank balancer gear here. If you're rebuilding the motor, you wanna make sure that your crank balancer gear, that dot there and your crank gear line up. If these dots don't line up, you're gonna have some serious bottom end issues. You're gonna get your four-wheeler completely together, spin your motor over, and your crank balancer is gonna slam against your crank shaft. You don't want that. Those balancers and those cranks work together. You don't want those two out of sync. So make sure those dots are lined up. Make sure your dots are facing this direction so that you can line those up. Okay, going back together then, slide this starter gear in. Okay, make sure that washer's in behind there. And don't forget your woodruff key. 
Your flywheel here is magnetic. So if you set this down on top of your woodruff key, it's gonna pick it up just like it did for me. Okay, put our woodruff key in there. What I do a lot of times, I'll tilt it a little bit my direction. The reason why is because there's a slot right here in your flywheel. You can just take and I'll stick my big head right in front of the camera there and make sure you slide that into place there. What I do a lot of times, I'll take and spin this back starter gear so that it'll kind of slip into place there. And then you can take, tap that uh, flywheel on there. Now, because that flywheel is, um, it's tapered in behind there, that's why you had to have the special puller. There's nothing that you, nothing else that you need to do at this point. When you tighten this up, it's actually gonna take and push back on your uh, flywheel here and hold everything into place. That's why it's important that you get these two parts back on there correctly. Obviously, we don't have our cover on. Tighten that up and that's gonna force that flywheel into place. Sometimes, some, some other models, you'll have a nut that holds this flywheel on, or you'll have a bolt that holds this flywheel on, separate from your recoil pull starter. That's not the case here. You just have your recoil pull starter cup that holds this on. So, going back together then, once that's on there, okay, again, nothing to tighten that up. Okay, make sure you got your gear going the right direction. And what I like to do is take our shaft, and you might have to slide it too far back until you get it into place there, and then slide your shaft in. Now, you won't be able to get this cover on unless that shaft is in there properly. So if you don't have it in all the way, or your gear isn't lined up, you're not gonna be able to get this cover on. So that may be part of the problem if you, um, if you can't get this cover on. Okay, get this gasket area completely cleaned up. Use, uh, you, you can use a gasket scraper or a, a uh, razor blade to clean these up. Okay, replace the gasket that's on there. I actually have to tear this motor down even farther than this. I just want to show you guys how to do it. So that's why I'm not replacing the gasket. Slide this cover on. You should have dowel pins here and here, and sometimes they'll get stuck here and here. So uh, make sure that those are in place. What that does is hold your gasket in the place there. It also holds this cover from shifting uh, while you're moving things around. So because of the magnets, this will kind of suck in. You want to be careful you don't damage that seal there. Now. You may have to do a little bit of tapping just like we did there. You wanna make sure that everything is straight and ready to go. What you wanna make sure is that it's sealed all the way around there, okay? You've got your new gasket, that's gonna seal it up. Um, what I don't want you to do is uh, use these bolts here that go around the cover to actually snug everything up. That's not gonna work. You wanna make sure just by tapping it and you can take a little rubber mallet or a plastic mallet and tap on it there. Just make sure everything's seated properly but I don't want you to have any kind of a gap all the way around there, okay? So we'll put these eight millimeter bolts all the way in. We'll take and put the recoil pull starter cup back on there, snug down that 17 millimeter with the washer there, put our plastic plug in there, tap these out, okay? Put our, put our new bolts in there and then put our recoil pull starter on. So that is uh, the charging system on a Yamaha Grizzly 350. Again, if there's more stuff that you want me to do on this four-wheeler, I do need to do a handful of other things. I can try to post those videos for you. Leave those in the comments below. I appreciate you guys watching.